Today we're building some jack stands with an Acme screw so you can adjust the height and push on things a little bit. And I'm gonna build them in a variety of different sizes. And this is not for supporting vehicles or heavy equipment while you're working under them. These are for fabrication to go on my fixture table or even on the floor to hold up tubing or axles or things like that and give me some adjustability. This is a tool that I never realized how much I needed, but I came across the idea a couple months ago when I was watching a video by Tom Lipton on his YouTube channel, Ox Tools. I'll link his video down in the description, and he built something somewhat similar to this. Now, his build was really nice. Um, however, it had some machining that had to be done, and I wanted to design something that could be completely built out of laser cut parts other than the screw, the nut, and a bearing underneath. So here in CAD, I started off with the model of the Acme screw and nut. I just downloaded this off McMaster car and I knew I wanted a one inch Acme screw. I then designed some uprights and I wanted each of the uprights to be the same so I get the quantity discount when I order my laser cut parts. And then I put a base together that has slots to align the tabs in the uprights without any fixturing, which is really nice. And also some holes that align with my fixture table. To keep the screw from rotating, I just put in a little square piece, and this will also act as a guide in the bottom in that square tubing that'll be created by the sides. I designed a little wrench up on the top to rotate that nut, and notice there's a washer bearing so the nut isn't riding right on the surface. Now up top to rest your material on is a little V-block made of tab and slot parts as well. I replicated this with four different sizes of jack stands by modifying the model and then uploaded the parts all to send, cut, send. So this is going to be a really big order here with a lot of pieces to get to each of the four different variants. I added them all to the cart and if you're a fellow send, cut, send user, you can get a 15% discount on all your send, cut, send down in the description. It's not an affiliate link, but it is an awesome thing they do for us here on the channel and then I'm ready to order the parts and get started on this build. It's always really fun for me to see the parts that I drew up on the computer show up in real life, ready to put together. I well, got all the parts unpacked and organized here, and it all looks good except for one major issue, and this one's pretty embarrassing. Well, here's where the problem lies. The screw goes down through here, and there's a top plate to support it. Well forgot to model in the hole. I'm just gonna use an annular cutter here on my little mill to make that hole, and I'll add a little bit of lube. This is Anchor Lube. It's a water-based lubricant. They sent it out to me. I've been using it about a year now, and it works really good. It kind of sticks to what you're doing, and it's an easy cleanup. So I'll punch the hole through here, and in the plans on my website, that has been modified, so it will just come with the laser cut hole, and you won't have to do this. But uh, I got a pretty good hole. It's gonna work just fine. These pieces just slide in right here, and then right up at the top, if you notice this notch cut out right there, fits right with this right there. So I can just stack these in like that. You probably only need a few tacks in all reality because this fits together really well, but I'm going to actually put a single bevel on this to form a groove to weld in around the top on the outside and also right here. So this is still hot coming off the grinder. You can see though, I just beveled down to go maybe a little bit more than halfway into the depth, uh, just like I did right here. I don't need to have full penetration on these, but I do want a little bit of room for the weld to go. You could do all the welding on this with either MIG or TIG. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna use TIG for the tacking and MIG to weld it out. Uh, the reason I'm using TIG to tack is that I can get nice small tacks. I won't have to grind any of them down, and I'm just putting one on the top and one on the bottom of each of these plates. And this is gonna work really well. Now, I'm going to run an intermittent weld, and it doesn't really matter if I'm precise with it from a strength perspective, but I like the craftsmanship of marking out with a scale where my intermittent welds are gonna be. And so just a press of a button here on the HDP, switches me from TIG to MIG, and I'm ready to go.
This is what it looks like after it's finished with those intermittent welds as well as the top plate and those top sections welded out. This right here is an optional piece. It's a little spacer so that I have a half inch thickness for my fixture table bolts. It's completely optional if you aren't using a fixture table or if you have a different type of bolt, you wouldn't need that. So that's the last part on these stands and then I can go ahead and assemble the rest of them and I'm just gonna rapid fire through these right here. I won't show a lot of the assembly of those. But you can see how nicely those plates fit together and the process is exactly the same. I'm just using that TIG right there. And when I'm able to line these up in a row, I can you know, move a little bit more production style and crank through them pretty quickly with those tack welds, marking out the intermittent welds, and welding them out. With all the stands complete, I need to build the acne screws. And so I'll go ahead and cut these to length here on the Evolution chop saw. And this is going to leave a nice clean cut so when I Put it together i don't really need to do a whole lot of deburring and i'm going to weld it right into that square plate and that'll be an anti-rotational that'll ride in the square that was created by those uprights so i'm going to put just four little tack welds on here you'll see why later on in the build but i just want four tack welds so that they would be removable if i ever wanted to take that bottom plate out to service this because i'm going to weld the top piece right on so this installs just like you'd expect, and so far, so good. Now I'll turn my attention to the little V-blocks, and I'm putting a single bevel on these for the welds just as well, a little chamfer there on the edge using the belt grinder, and they'll fit together just like this. And so that center plate transfers the load from the screw up into each of the side plates and I just need a good solid weld to hold those side plates together. I'm going to assemble this in the same way just using that single bevel there to give a place to get some good deep weld penetration um, without full penetration. So I'm going to tack it together with TIG and then come in with MIG uh, to weld that out. Now one of the reasons that I don't want to have full penetration is the deeper you go, the more distortion you're going to have. And I want to have that shelf to keep it true and in place so as this weld shrinks, it has something to pull against on that shoulder to keep everything geometrically square. So uh, there is a reason to not go to uh, full penetration in a lot of cases. So I'm going to go ahead and grind and clean up these stands and paint the stands and wrenches, but I haven't painted the V-blocks. And let me show you in a minute why that is. So here, when it comes to the assembly, I can slide the screw in right there with the anti-rotational, and that works really well. Um, the actual V-block, I struggled with how to attach that. And at first I thought I could just put a button head screw in the middle and you can definitely do that. If you want to be able to remove it to make this more serviceable, you can just drill and tap a hole there and use a button head socket head cap screw in the top. But I'm just going to weld around the bottom because in all reality, I'm not actually going to service this. There aren't really parts that are going to wear out for me. And if they did, I can just nip those four tacks with a cutoff wheel and pop that bottom plate off and then I could remove the screw and service it anyway and then replace that plate. So it'll just be welded all the way around. So in order to assemble it, I don't want this nut to ride right on the steel surface. So I want a bearing that'll take an axial load along the uh, length there. So one option is a thrust bearing like this. It's a needle roller bearing and these work really well. However, I don't want to use this because I have a bunch of dust flying around in the shop and this isn't going to be as serviceable. Also, I'd like to have just a little bit more friction to hold my position. So I've opted not to use those. Now, those are really inexpensive and you definitely could, um, but I'm going to use one of these bronze uh, oil light type thrust bearings. And this right here is what I first bought. However, it's a smaller size than the inside of the wrench. And so the wrench would still ride on the steel, which is not really a big deal. But I ordered some larger uh, outer diameter bearings because I wanted that wrench to just ride up top. And these look like they're going to work really well. So this slides on there. And then it supports both the nut and the handle as it goes around and makes for a really smooth fluid motion. 
and gives that wrench just a little bit more grip on the nut. And see, I can lift it off if I'm in a tight spot or something and I need to do that. So it's pretty versatile. And I'm really happy with this and I just need to weld the top on. And I'm actually gonna use the jack itself to fixture it. So I've put together some pieces off my fixture table. If you don't have a fixture table, that's fine. You could probably just hold it in place and it'd be all right. Or you could rig something up with some tubing or angle iron to lift that jack up against a little frame. Um, but here I've grounded right to that block because I don't want to run my ground through a bearing or through the screw because that could create a little arc mark and then it always have a catch in the screw right there. And this is going to work really well. Now I'm TIG welding these because I don't want to get any spatter on that screw. If you were to MIG weld them, you definitely want to mask that screw off somehow so you don't get spatter on it. But with those welded on, I painted the top V blocks and they work really well in all the sizes, both big and small. So I'm happy with how these turned out. These are definitely gonna be a useful project and the way that it goes together, it would be easy for me to make more. I'll see what size I use the most and probably make a few more of those. So here is the finished product across the board with all the different sizes. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you are interested in building these, check out the plans linked down in the description. My courses are linked down there all the time. If you're just getting started with welding and fabrication, those can help out a ton. We'll see you next time.